So, let's talk about some games. I actually picked up four games at launch for the Switch. Two full-priced, cartridge-based games and two $20 downloadable games. One thing I want to mention about the screenshots that you're seeing here is that they were all captured directly from the Switch at 720p and stretched to fill this 1080p video. So if you're seeing a little bit of warping or distortion or fuzziness in the images, it's a result of that scaling. The interesting thing about that is the Switch, when displaying these games on a 1080p display, has no such issue. I would be hard-pressed to tell the difference between a 720-900 or 1080p image being generated by the Switch because they all look equally good as far as I can tell. I wasn't able to discern any meaningful difference between the resolutions. And also keep in mind that these images have been compressed a bit, so you're not seeing them quite as good as they would look on the Switch itself. So the first game I want to talk about is Fast RMX, which is an interesting F-Zero slash Wipeout-ish futuristic racing game. And one of the big differentiating factors for this game is that it includes a color switching mechanic wherein you can switch the color of your ship between two possibilities that you can match two power-ups that are on the track you're racing on. And the idea is that as you race along these tracks and you're switching colors, you can maximize the effect and minimize any potential harmful effects of the power-ups that you're driving across. And it's very interesting to me how much that little extra mechanical wrinkle adds something kind of unique and kind of special to this futuristic racing genre. On paper, this would seem like a very simplistic, very run-of-the-mill, very average game. But that one little mechanical wrinkle and also the fact that it runs so well and so fluidly and looks so visually engaging on the Switch goes a long way toward making this a very recommendable title. It also supports split screen and online play. Split screen can go up to four players and you can in fact use the Joy-Cons that come with the system for two player split screen. You just have to be sure to put the controllers into the two-player Joy-Con mode, which can be accomplished from the controller area on the home screen to ensure that you can actually use the left Joy-Con for player one and the right Joy-Con for player two. But it's also possible to use both Joy-Cons for the single-player full-screen experience as long as they're in that correct mode. I definitely have been very impressed with what I've played so far. I'm feeling very confident in the 20 bucks that I spent on it and think it's a good example and showcase of a lot of the potential of the machine and was definitely fun and engaging and interesting to play. Moving on to potentially one of the more controversial games in the launch lineup, 1-2 Switch actually surprised me quite a bit. And I think one thing that's important to note about this game is how much it relies on a particular situation or a particular desire on the part of the people playing it. I think this is an absolutely excellent party game. I think it's an absolutely excellent example of how features that are unique to the Switch and the Joy-Cons specifically, such as HD Rumble and the enhanced motion controls, can be worked into a very compelling, very fun, very engaging gameplay experience. And I think another thing that 1-2 Switch does in particular is to firmly establish the Switch as a go-to party device. In other words, a system that is fun to gather around and have people doing interesting, unorthodox, untraditional gaming activities in a way that will be not only entertaining to the people participating in the game, but people watching as well. I think 1-2 Switch is one of those experiences that really is going to benefit from having an audience of people watching it. And as a result, I think the bigger your party, the more people you have experiencing 1-2 Switch, the more fun you're going to have with it, the more exciting and entertaining it's going to be, and the more mileage and bang for your buck you're going to get out of the asking price. 
I will say that I did pre-order this game on Amazon, and as a result, ended up only spending $40 on it, which I think is a much more reasonable price than the $50 that's being asked at launch. And ideally, I think this game at $30 would be an absolute must-buy for any Switch owner. But having said all that, I still could understand why somebody who's really into throwing parties or really into attending parties and wants to bring the Switch along and have a great time with the equipment that simply comes in the box and not having to really bring anything additional to the party, literally. I can absolutely understand why somebody would spend 40 or $50 on this game and could get a lot of mileage out of it, not only interacting with various different party groups, but even the same party group in repeated sessions. I, for example, spent a couple hours with 1-2-Switch, even going past the point in time where the game reminds you that it might be a good idea to take a break and did not get to experience every game available by a long shot. And ended up feeling quite engaged and satisfied and looking forward to playing it again in the future by the end of the session. Up next we have Snipper Clips, which is by far, to me, the most interesting and engaging and surprising title in the Switch launch lineup. I know that for a lot of people, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the elephant in the room and the thing that everybody is saying you have to have when you get this console. But for me personally, this is the game that I think really does the best job of selling a lot of the concepts of the Switch and introducing a lot of the functionality of the Joy-Cons themselves and giving you something to do cooperatively with friends who are there experiencing the console for the first time with you. There's just something really desperately charming about this game and really fun about being presented with a puzzle, having to work with your friend to figure out how to solve the puzzle, and then encouraging and cheering on your friend as they take whatever steps are necessary to make the solution work. Because one of the really cool things about Snipper Clips is how just because you can visualize or understand what the solution to a particular problem is, that doesn't mean that you're actually going to immediately be able to mechanically execute that solution. And so there's a little bit of a buildup and a little bit of an interesting dynamic and tension as you get to the point where you figure out what you actually need to do to solve the puzzle and then get the mechanical proficiency in your gameplay to accomplish that. And of course, depending on who you're playing with and what their general level of skill with video games is, that can lead to some really hilarious and triumphant moments whenever you finally do solve some of these scenarios. So again, I would highly recommend Snipper Clips as a launch window purchase. I think this is easily a game that anybody with a Switch and any desire to expose the console to their friends and family and other people should have in their repertoire. This is one of those games that when you pull it out and show it to people and let them experience it, it really helps them understand what this system is all about and why it's, in my view, pretty special. So having said all of that, it's time for the elephant in the room. It's time to talk about Zelda. And I will say, right off the bat, I personally have never historically been a huge Zelda fan. I have played several of the 3D Zelda games, such as Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess. Never finished any of them. And the interesting thing to me about Breath of the Wild, from the several hours of it that I've played so far, is how, in my mind at least, this game could have easily not been a Zelda game. And I think that's a really important thing to point out, because I've heard a lot of people talking about the Switch launch and Breath of the Wild in particular, and saying, "Uh, the game looks cool and everything, but I'm not really that into Zelda. And I think one of the things that's really important to point out about this game is that 
this game could have easily been rebranded as a completely new IP. Yes, there are things about it that are very inherently Zelda-ish, but those are also things that you would not necessarily pick up on if you didn't already have familiarity with prior games in the series. And I think had Nintendo been a bit braver with this game and actually, say, chosen to market it as a new IP, it might have even gone better for them because the game is so good that it would have gotten past the idea that a lot of people have that they maybe don't like Zelda games. I don't know. It's one of those things where I think about it a lot and I think about my own sort of preconceptions about what I think a Zelda game is and then was forced to immediately realize as soon as I started playing Breath of the Wild that it is so much more and so much different than anything I've experienced in the series thus far that I almost think it's been done a bit of a disservice by being tagged with the Zelda name. Now, of course, fans of Zelda will completely disagree with that and say that that's part of what makes the game compelling. But at the same time, I would highly encourage anybody who maybe is on the fence about it and thinking, oh, it's just another Zelda or I'm not really that big of a fan of Zelda games historically, to try to get some hands-on time with this game and see for yourself what it is about it that makes it different from past games that have borne the Zelda name. I know from my perspective, again, as somebody who's historically not been a fan of the series, I'm feeling quite engaged and quite compelled, and I think there's a very realistic possibility that I could end up finishing this game. And that's saying something for me as somebody who typically does not play a lot of single-player games these days. So take that for what it's worth. On the technical side of things, I will say and I will confirm that I have seen some of the slowdown slash frame rate issues that a lot of folks have been talking about in the game. Not so much in handheld mode, but certainly whenever it is in docked mode and running in 900p. The difference between the frame rate issues in this game and what, for example, you might be used to if you're a PC gamer seeing dropped frames is that the frame rate slowdowns in this game feel more like a sort of slow motion than the jerky, stuttery frame rate losses you might be accustomed to seeing on PC. At the end of the day, I'm not thrilled to see that sort of stuff happening in this big launch flagship title, which is otherwise incredibly impressive from what I've seen of it so far. But I also kind of understand why that might be the case. And I have to say, I would not be surprised to see those issues get smoothed out in a future update. I know the day one update for Breath of the Wild addressed at least a few of those scenarios and smoothed out some parts that had some slowdown associated with them. So that kind of sets a precedent and gives me some hope for the not too distant future. Again, having said all that, I do think this is a fantastic, phenomenal game based on what I've seen of it so far, but I couldn't in good conscience talk about the game and all the positive things about it without mentioning those technical frame rate hiccups, subtle as they are. So I wanted to leave you folks with a look at the user interface for the Switch. In particular, I wanted to mention that this light on dark theme is not the default for the system, but I found it to be much more usable and much easier on the eyes myself than the default dark on light. Of course, as with many other things, your mileage may vary, but I thought it was worth mentioning. And I also have to say, just in general, I'm pretty pleased with what I've seen of the user interface of the Switch. I think they make good use of the buttons, good use of their screen real estate, good use of the controllers in their various configurations. And all in all, I'm just generally very pleased with my whole experience using the Switch for the various things that it does other than playing games, such as the eShop and taking photos and configuring the controllers and what have you. Some general final thoughts on the Switch based on my time with it so far are that I think it's a very impressive package. I've been very much pleased with it so far. 
I think the four launch titles that I mentioned here in this video are all very impressive and very valid in their own right. These are probably the four titles that I would recommend that anybody who's picking up a Switch at launch at least consider, depending on, of course, what sort of experience you're looking to have with the system. And I do have to say that I have not experienced many issues at all during my time with the Switch thus far. I've felt that the battery life has been quite good and right in line with what I'd expect from a system of this sort. I have not had any problems with Joy-Con connectivity. I've even gone out of my way to try to break line of sight and replicate some of the issues that people have been reporting from various outlets to no avail. And despite the fact that the system itself is very much focused on the act of playing games and not much else, I actually consider that quite the positive. I have plenty of other devices in my possession that are capable of watching Netflix or doing various other multimedia functions. For me, when I look at the Switch, I see it as a device specifically for playing games in as many different circumstances as is practical, and I think it accomplishes that job extremely well, and I see nothing but bright things in the future for this system. I fully expect that I'll be getting my money's worth out of the titles that I've purchased thus far, and I'm definitely looking forward to playing and covering more Switch-related stuff in the future. I will say I was extremely hyped for the launch of this console, and I think the best thing that I can say about it is that it did not disappoint me, which is something that's very, very rare in this day and age in the world of video games. Having said all that, I hope you folks have enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button, and why not share it with a friend? If you'd like to see more videos from me in the future, be sure to hit subscribe, and I will see you next time.